Hi, I'm Lucy from Sew Essential and I'm here today to share a roundup of patterns and fabrics and tips from the Sewing Bee Series 8, Episode 8, the quarterfinals, which was History Week based around the 1930s. Everything I talk about in the video is available on our lovely website and you'll find links to our website and all the products I mentioned below. If you like what you see today, please like and subscribe because every Friday I bring you a video packed full of sewing goodness. If you can't wait a whole week, do jump on and check out our social media accounts which I've also linked below. So although it was 1930s week, which isn't an era I'm particularly into fashion wise, I did feel that the patterns used were actually very contemporary or could be translated into something that looked very contemporary. Starting with the Pattern Challenge, which was a pair of wide-legged sailor-themed women's trousers. And we all know that in the last couple of years, wide legs are becoming more and more popular again. We're definitely having a, a definite move away from skinny leg trousers that we've had for at least the last decade. And wide leg trousers are becoming more and more fashionable all the time. So I did feel that these were actually really quite contemporary and, and of the time. So there's a number of patterns that you could use to create these sorts of trousers. The first one I want to share is Birda 6573, which has a high, it's a high-waisted design with a waistband. It's got the wide leg, and then I think the buttons down the front are just decorative um, because these trousers are actually fastened with a zip at the back. So the real challenge for the bees was the, was the construction of the front part of the trousers. It was quite a difficult to put all the different pieces together because the trousers were fastened with buttons and buttonholes underneath and then there was a panel that came up over the top of that and that was also fastened with buttons and buttonholes so with this pattern you could get that same look but without the hassle of having to do those multiple um, panels and fastenings on the front and in all honesty I just looked at that and thought wow I bet they'd be really uncomfortable to wear I think a zip fastening at the back would be much more practical um, but obviously that wouldn't make for interesting TV which is why they put those pattern challenges in there um, this pattern, all our birder patterns at the time of filming are actually currently 50% off as well. So if you're quick and you're reacting quickly to this video, you'll be able to grab yourself a bargain. The links are below to all the patterns and everything I mentioned today. Um, and this pattern runs in a 6 to 18, which is a 30 bust, 23 waist, 32 and a half hip. Um, and the 18 is a 39 and a half bust, 32 and a half waist and 41 and three quarter hip. The next pattern I want to talk to you about is Vogue 9282 and this is actually classed as a very easy pattern by Vogue. It runs in sizes 6 to a 22. A 6 is a 30 and a half bust, 23 waist and 32 and a half hip and a 22 is a 44 bust, 37 waist and 46 hip. So this pattern doesn't have a waistband so even easier. Um, it's got options for different trouser lengths. It's fastened with a zip at the back and it's got seams running down the centre front of the leg and the centre back of the leg and then you've got options again for those decorative buttons on the front. Um, so yeah another option there. This looks like it would be really nice made up in a nice crepe. We've got a lovely medium weight crepe on the website Prestige Crepe by John Caldor. I'll pop a link to that below for you for a more sort of dressy trouser but the ones I showed you previously the Birda pattern probably would look better in a nice cotton twill or a denim and again I'll pop links to those below for you because we've got some great ones on the site that would be really suitable. Um, the next pattern I want to share with you is Birda 6032, so another one currently in the 50% off sale. Really like this design actually. Again, it does fasten with a zip at the back, but there is a really interesting detail, design detail on the front of the trouser where there's two pieces that come out of the side seams and sort of curve up and then are fastened at the front and they can either be fastened with a D-ring or fastened with snaps. Um, 
Um, so just a fun, interesting little detail. Again, probably not as complicated as the construction the sewing bees had to do and a lot more comfortable to wear. And then there's the option to put decorative snaps down the sides of the trouser legs as well and different trouser leg lengths, I think, on this pattern as well. Um, it runs in an 8 to a 22, which is a 31 and a half bust, 24 and a half waist and 34 hip. And a 22 is a 43 and a half bust, 36 and a quarter waist and a 45 and a half hip. And again, this one would look great sewn up in one of our lovely cotton twills, which we've got in a lovely range of colours or one of our denims. And I'll pop links to all of those below for you. And then finally, Vogue 1815 is another wide leg sailor inspired trouser and is pretty much exactly the same as the one the sewing bees made or it's as, probably as close as you're going to get because this one does actually have um, front button closures and um, is yeah it was created the construction is very very similar to the sewing bee pattern you can make it as a short or you can make it as wide leg trousers um, which have got a slit sort of opening down the front of the leg and this one runs in an 8 to a 24 so that's a 31 and a half bust which you don't need to know for trousers <laughs> just realized i've been reading all the bust sizes out but never mind 24 waist and a 33 and a half hip and then the 24 is a 39 waist and a 48 hip so again yeah very similar on that theme i was quite surprised how many patterns we actually had that fit the bill there um, if you are interested in creating buttonholes i'll pop some of our top tips for sewing buttonholes be below for you um, and as i said i'll link all the relevant fabrics below for you as well. And then on to the really beautiful, exciting bit of the episode, which was the made to measure bias cut gowns oh my goodness um the bees were supposed to take inspiration from the likes of um catherine hepburn you know real hollywood glamour fi film star sort of quality um dresses so a huge challenge how they sew these things under this pressure uh, in that time frame i really don't know some of the sewing that was produced was absolutely fantastic quality um, I just don't know how they did it in the time slots they were allocated but I do have some good tips for if you want to have a go at sewing on the bias so I'll run those, through those for you after I've shown you the patterns and the fabrics that I've picked out but I've also got a little bit of trivia for you from lovely Irena in the office who um she did a fashion degree uh, a number of years ago and she straight away said, oh, uh, it was Madeleine Vionette who um, pioneered the bias cut dress. And um, yeah, she, she was somebody who worked in couture and she was the first lady to do that and to come up with the idea of bias cut dresses. So we've got her to thank for this uh, beautiful cut that oozes glamour and sophistication and just elegant so yeah but let's get started then with the pattern picks so the first one I love 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 I think this is really contemporary as well it's Vogue 1697 I think it's the one that Deborah made um it's super contemporary it's got um, a lovely cut at the front, cut away armholes into sort of like a halter neck and it's got bust darts that come out of those side seams and down towards the bust which is really unusual. Um, it's got an asymmetric panel across the front of the skirt and that runs across the back as well and then it's the back detail that I love on this one. It's got spaghetti straps that um, come around from the halter neck at the front and then there's like a, um, a single spaghetti strap down the centre back and then that comes out to the sides to join the dress. Just a really sexy, elegant, beautiful detail. And then there's a drapey sort of cowl finish um, and at the lower back, so it's really low on the back. It's just beautiful dress um incredibly hard to sew really well but deborah did an amazing job um patrick picked out quite a lot of the the sewing that she'd done and how well she'd executed things like the hem um, it really was very beautiful very expertly done um, this pattern runs in an 8 to a 24 so um, an 8 is a 31 and a half bust 
24 waist, 33 and a half hip, and a 24 is a 46 bust, 39 waist, and 48 hip. And this can be made up in satin back crepes, silk crepes, that sort of thing. Um, so I chose, we've actually got a satin back crepe that's very, very similar to the one that Deborah used. She made a lovely bright yellow um, version of this dress. Again, I thought really contemporary color choice. And we've got this delightful, really fluid satin back crepe. Um, so it's got the shiny side and the matte side if you prefer. You can sew with either side with the satin back crepe. And it's in this lovely sort of canary yellow color, giving it that very modern contemporary twist. Um, so I will link all of these fabrics below for you so you can find them nice and easily. But that's the first bias cut dress. Then the next one I wanted to share with you is the one that Brogan made, which was Vogue 8814. Um, again, super elegant, um, just absolutely beautiful design details on this dress. One of the real plus points about this pattern is it comes with cup sizes from an A to a D. So if you're small busted or large busted and you usually have to make a small bust adjustment or a full bust adjustment, you might not need to with this pattern. If you're larger than a D cup, you're probably you're going to still have to make a full bust adjustment or work with the pattern pieces. But um, yeah, anyone in those cup sizes, you can just cut out the cup size relevant to you, which is great. Um, but yeah, this dress comes with options for a deep, V at the front or a, a sort of round scoop neck. It's got bust darts that come up from the side seams. Um, you've got the option for a crossover strap on the back or a racer back and then it's got a lovely chevron sort of panel on the front, um, a bias cut bodice and bias cut lower front, um, lower front skirt. Um, just absolutely beautiful. Again, difficult to sew, um, but not with our top tips. If you check those out, I'll give you those towards the end of the video. Um, it runs in a six to a 22. So a six is a 30 and a half bust, 23 waist and 32 and a half hip. And the 22 is a 44 bust, 37 waist, 46 hip. And again, this is suitable for all those lovely silky drapey fabrics. Brogan made hers in a really pale pink. And we haven't got one, I don't think, in a pale pink, but we have got this gorgeous mystique John Caldor satin back crepe, um, which comes in this beautiful fuchsia pink, which I thought would work really well. Again, you've got the matte side and the silky side with that and just an absolutely gorgeous contemporary colour again. And then the next pattern I wanted to share with you was reminiscent of the dresses that Man Yi and Annie made. So they both made a dress that crossed over at the front. Um, again, some fantastic show sewing on display here. Um, and the pattern I thought that was similar to that, thanks to the crossover front and the nice long skirt length for that extra glamour with a side slit as well, was McCall's 7775. That runs in sizes six to 22. So so a six is a 30 and a half bust, 23 waist, 32 and a half hip. And a 22 is a 44 bust, 37 waist and 46 hip. Um, so yeah, it's got a cross, there's an option for a crossover neck with wide straps and a little keyhole detail underneath where it crosses over. It's got a center front seam, a side slit on the skirt. You've also got an option for more of a halter neck design with a V at the front and it looks like some pleats um, underneath where the halter straps come across. You can go for knee length on either of these gowns or um, full length and the halter version has got a center front slit. Um, and again, this would be great Crepe made up in crepes, crepe de chines, um, drapey fabrics would work really well. And I just thought I'd show you the John Caldor Mystique satin back crepe in this beautiful red colour because Annie made a really beautiful red dress. Um, and I just thought I'd have to show you this gorgeous colour as well because that would work well for that dress. And then finally, 
Christian made um, went against the grain. Oh, unbiased week on theme there, Christian. And um, he made a gown out of velvet rather than um, the satins and silks and things that the other bees used. And I think the the judges did pick him up on that because they sort of said, you know, those sorts of fabrics, um, stretchy fabrics, wouldn't have been available in the 1930s. But um, you know, lovely glamorous fabric and I just thought well let's run with that theme there wasn't a pattern that was especially close to what Christian made but an evening gown made in velvet fabric um, is obviously super glamorous and gorgeous and I just thought McCall's 7683 would be a good option it got the v-neck that um, Christian used but then it's quite a fitted bodice it's got a quite a fitted skirt with options for slit a slit at the front it's got the option for a train at the back but also if you wanted to, Christian you had sleeves on his dress um, if you wanted to cover up your arms or have some sort of coverage rather than um, the sort of sleeveless version there is an option to put a flounce across it as well but the other great thing with this pattern as well there's just lots of different options there's full length options shorter options like a bardeau type finish neckline the v-neck the flounce so i just thought it was a nice pattern to feature anyway it runs in sizes 6 to a 22 6 is 30 and a half bust 23 waist and 32 and a half hip and the 22 is a 44 bust, 37 waist and 46 hip and it suggests two-way stretch knits, jersey, velvet knits, that sort of thing. So I thought I'd just have to show you our gorgeous John Caldor um, Carlotta stretch velvet fabric. I've made a couple of dresses in this. I've made one in the navy blue and one in the wine colour and this is the beautiful deep purple colour. Don't know whether the camera is picking that colour up particularly well. If I hold it like that you can probably see a bit better. It's a really lovely sort of aubergine type um, purple, really pretty. Um, so yeah, I thought that would work well for that one. But top tips for sewing on the bias. The, the trick is not to stretch the fabric out of shape. That's the really tricky bit with working with fabric cut on the bias. The reason that bias binding is cut on the bias is because it will stretch and it will stretch to fit round curves and things which is what you want when you're using a bias binding but obviously you don't want a dress to stretch in the wrong places when you're sewing on the bias so you might want to consider cutting out with a rotary cutter and cutting mat rather than scissors because you can keep that and cutting on a single layer you can keep the fabric really nice and flat then and you don't run the risk of stretching it as you cut um, as much you also definitely, definitely, I would recommend using a walking foot. I'm going to put a video link below to our walking foot sort of explanation of, of why we use them and when they're useful. I'm going to put, put a link to that below. But essentially, a walking foot will prevent the layers of fabric from feeding through at different rates. It will work. There's a set of feed dogs on the foot that work with the feed dogs on the machine to feed the fabric through evenly, which is really important when you're sewing on the bias. So I'll pop a link to that video and where you can find our walking feet below as well. Um, definitely want to be doing stay stitching, um, you know, as, as early on in the process as you can, because even just sewing the fabric, it's so easy to stretch it. So definitely stay stitch any relevant seams and, you know, always consider when when they give you the instructions on patterns they usually will say if you stay stitching a neckline don't go all the way around the neckline and that's because you can stretch it as you sew it doing your stay stitching you're better off starting at one end stopping in the center and then working from the other side and stopping in the center as well don't let your fabric hang off the table as you sew as well. Sometimes people used to like to use an extension table to prevent that happening because as it hangs and the weight pulls on it, it can actually stretch the fabric out of shape that way. Um, we've talked about a walking foot. Um, and then the other really important thing, oh, I'll pop a link to how to sew French seams below for you as well because they are great a great finish for the sorts of um, silky fabrics we were talking about and when you're working with bias cut 
um, garments as well but also using your overlocker to finish seams can work really well um, but finally the really important tip hugely important is to always let your garment hang before you hem it because you will not believe how much those hems can and those garments can walk um, when they're cut on the bias you, you'd be quite surprised how much they'll drop so you want to, that fabric to drop as much as it's going to before you hem it so there are top tips for those i'm going to pop uh, links to all the other tutorials and tips and things i mentioned below as well as all the patterns and fabrics i talked about and if you like what you see today please like and subscribe and i'll look forward to seeing you next time